Peace and blessings to the 12 tribes of Israel. Today I'm going to deal with a Bible share called Growing in Christ. Growing in Christ. Now, one of the biggest problems that we have is people are not growing in Christ. People are very comfortable in the Christian church, very, very comfortable with a nicey, nicey, nicey messages, nicey, nicey, nicey pastor that won't go through the scriptures. He just gives a pep talk, pep talk for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Some people have the audacity to give you a pep talk for two hours, right? Two hours where they give you a feel good. Feel good, feel good. Turn everything into a feel good. But they never really deal with the history. They never deal with the history or what the actual scripture is saying. Right. But they give you a pep talk, though. <laughs> they give you a good roundup to make you feel good. Right. And that doesn't allow you to grow. Right. It doesn't allow you to grow. Right. So everybody needs to be thinking, oh, if I came into Christ at this level and 10 years later, I'm on the same level, I'm not really growing, then there's a problem, right? If you say you come into Christ five years ago and the same bunch of scriptures is the same bunch of scriptures that you knew then is the same bunch of scriptures that you know now. And your faith is kind of wavering, you know, because you find yourself in places that you know deep down in your heart you shouldn't be, but you have no self-control. You feel like you don't have that self-control, right? It's because you're stagnant, right? It's because you're stagnant and you're not actually growing in Christ. Now, let's go through a few scriptures and hopefully that will help you, right? Because that's why I'm here. <laughs> I'm just... I'm just the brother that just helps you, gives you a few Bible shares and hopefully you can go away and study them and they will resonate in your spirit and you could build on that. Right. So let's go to Philippians 2 and we're going to read from 10 to 12. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the God, the Father. Wherefore, my brethren, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Right? So Paul is saying Christ is supreme. He created all things. He was there when all things were created. Right? And he said, every, in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord is, is the glory of God the Father. Right? God the Father is the head of Christ. The 12, wherefore my brethren, wherefore my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You need to take it upon yourself to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, right? Nobody's going to nanny you, you know, oh, well, um, I'm still smoking cigarettes. 10 years after I came to Christ, I'm still smoking cigarettes. I still, uh, I'm addicted to porn. I mean, I came in addicted to porn 10 years ago and 10 years later, I'm still addicted to porn. Five years ago, I came in and I had a smoking habit. Five years later, I still have a smoking habit. That's not growth. <laughs> That's not growth. That's being stagnant, right? You're supposed to move from level to level to level. Growth, there should be growth and never be comfortable as a Christian, as an Israelite, never be comfortable with your level. Always study to, to increase your knowledge and increase and strengthen your faith, right? But nobody's going to come and nanny you, right? If you put yourself in a church that gives you the feel good, say like a Joel Osteen church that gives you the feel good, feel good, feel good, or a Creflo Dollar church that gives you a feel good, feel good, makes you feel all tingly inside, <laughs> right? Tells you what you want, what you like here and makes you laugh makes you feel good as a woman, makes you feel uh, this is how life should be, right? They're catering. A lot of these churches, 
right? I'm not picking out anyone in particular. A lot of these prosperity churches are catering towards the female. Everything is a female message. That's why they have fe that's why they have female pastors. Why? Because it's about the woman. It's about woman's liberation. Right. So therefore, if you put yourself in a church that's not going to teach you, not going is not going to push you. Of course, there's not going to be any growth. Right. But you yourself need to take it upon yourself to do your own research, to do your own studying, to fast, to pray and to be obedient to the most high. Fasting and, pr and prayer is very important, but also obedience. Right. The Bible says that you should work out your own salvation. You know, we should work out our own salvation. If Christ was to come, would you actually be saved? Will you be saved? Are you, will you be, would he catch you in your depths of sin? Right? That those are the questions you need to be asking yourself. You should never be comfortable with your level, especially if your level is still in the baby milk stage, right? All right, so let's now go to Hebrews 11 and we're going to read 6. Hebrews 11 and we're going to read uh, 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Right. So let's read it again. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. You must have faith in, in who you cannot see. Your faith levels should be strong, right? You know there is a God and there is Christ. And Christ came and died for you, right? Died, died for the nation of Israel, right? And he died so that this world can have some kind of order, right? But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, that he is a rewarder, of them that diligently seek him. You see, the, 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 the Bible doesn't say those that just believe, right? If you just believe, that's more than enough, right? There's so many precepts in the Bible that proves that it's just beyond a belief. It's, just, it's beyond an initial belief, acceptance of Christ. It is a constant diligently searching for Christ, right? So, it's, so it says, who diligently seek him. How do you seek Christ? How do you seek God? You seek God and Christ via study. That's the only thing that, that can help you. Study research, right? Study to make yourself approve. A good workman need not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. That means you must be able to study, know how to study the Bible, know how to put the precepts together, right? So let's go to John 7.38. John 7, 38. He that believeth on me, as the scripture's heart say it, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Right? So if you believe in Christ, as the scripture's heart say it, out of his belly, that's from the inside, shall flow rivers of living water. That means you'll get understanding because that's what water means. It means, it means understanding. Right. That's what water means. So if it's flowing, it's if it's flowing from within, it means that you have understanding. You will not only know it, but you'll understand it and then you'll be able to translate that knowledge and understanding into wisdom. You see, wisdom is the principal thing with all you're getting. Get understanding. Right. So under knowledge, wisdom and understanding, they all go together. Right. So. He that believed on me, as the scripture's heart said, out of your belly, as from the inside shall flow rivers of, of living water. You'll get understanding, right? That's what the Bible is saying. You will get the understanding, right? Now, let's go back to Hebrews 5. But you have to believe in what the Bible is saying. You can't just believe a pastor, right? Because we know pastors, they say things to make you feel comfortable, to make you feel good. Right. They say things to make you feel good. So we can't just go with what a pastor is saying. I was watching uh, a, a preacher that was doing a whole sermon wearing a baseball cap. Literally the whole sermon wearing a baseball cap. The Bible says that 
whatever a man has on his head, he should take it off. Right. When he's prophes when he's praying and prophesying. Right. But he was wearing a baseball cap before the whole congregation. Now, is that growth? No, it's not. It's stagnancy because you don't know that. All right. So that's why it's important to diligently seek after Christ and God so that you can grow spiritually. Right. Or associate yourself with people that have wisdom, are walking in wisdom, are able to articulate what the Bible is saying. So we're reading Hebrews 5 and we're reading from 8 to 14. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Right. So you will get eternal salvation if you obey Christ. Ten, called of God and, and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. So Christ was Melchizedek, right? So Christ was Melchizedek coming back as Christ. 11, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing you are dull of hearing. Let's read 11 again. Of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing you are dull of hearing. You don't want to hear it, right? 12, for when for the time, dull of hearing means as well that you, 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 you don't have the spiritual eyes and the spiritual ears to actually see and hear what is being said, right? You, you just can't see it. Right. That's that's what Paul is, is trying to say. Twelve. For when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. And are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. So Paul is rebuking them. Right. He is rebuking the congregation and he's saying, for then for the time you ought to be teachers, you've been in this thing for a while. You didn't just come in yesterday. You've been here for a while. You need me to come back and teach you the basic, basic, basic stuff. You have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. You need to someone to come back and teach you the basics again. Again. Because you're not studying, you're not studying, you're not growing, you're not praying, you're not obeying, you're not fasting, you're not doing anything for spiritual growth. You're aligning yourself with wickedness, right? That's what Paul is trying to get across. And I'll become such as have need of milk. So you're going back to being a babe again, going back to being a baby again, right? When you just come into Christ and you came to Christ and, you know, you had that kind of excitement right just like a baby is excited to touch things and to feel things and to play with things because it's the first time a baby is seeing those things right they're innocent you see <laughs> when you came to Christ you were innocent you know the most high let you off the hook with a lot of things because you're a babe but you got to move from that initial stage and you got to grow you can't be the, that same level a year after that, then a second year after that, then a third year after that, then a fourth year after that, then a fifth. You still can't articulate a basic scripture. Why Christ came? Why did Christ come? You can't articulate it. What are we supposed to do as a result as Christ come in? You can't articulate it. Those are the things that are basic, you know, <laughs> What is the color of Christ? What is the color of, of, of uh, the Israelites? You can't articulate that basic stuff. That's basic stuff. That's straightforward stuff. Let's read it again. But when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. Strong meat is what you get. When you are precepting the Bible, you are studying, you are praying, you are fasting. You're doing what it takes to move you on from one level to the next. You see, nobody's going to come to you and baby you the whole time, right? Because you are a grown man and a grown woman. People only baby children, right? Because they're children. But when you become a grown man and a grown woman in this faith, 
You have to take responsibility and work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, but he is a babe. Right? If you're on that same level forever, for a very long time, it means that you are full of unrighteousness because the word didn't have an effect. You didn't do anything with the word. Right? You didn't do anything with the word. You come into Christ excited. Oh, the Lord saved me. Oh, he healed me of, of, of whatever ailments you had. But then you go back to making uh, despicable music with F words and with uh, immu sexual innuendo and promoting all sorts of fornication and adultery. And you're promoting music scantily clad and being basically a whore, promoting whoredom. That is not someone that has done something with the milk. Right. You've basically sold out to the world. Right. You need to move from level to level for everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, but he is a babe. Right. You're a babe. I remember in the early days of my Christianity, you know, they would say I was in a prosperity church and they would say, oh, well, the Lord knows your sin nature. He knows that you're going to sin. That's why he came and died for you. So you don't even have to confess your sins because he knows that you're going to sin. Now, that is stupidity, right? That is stupidity, right? And that's not biblical. But as a babe, you, you can accept that because you're a babe. You don't know any better. A baby doesn't know any better when the baby sticks their fingers in a, in a, in a socket Right. They don't know any better because they're a babe. They're still searching for the answers. So that's why after a few months, you should grow. And after a year, you should your growth should be exponentially. Right. And then the second year, and the third year, you should grow every year. You should grow and grow and grow. Learn new things, exciting things about the Bible. 14. But strong meat belong it to them that are of full age. If you are of full age, you mature in the word, you're mature, you're mature enough, you're able to put the precepts together and gain the understanding. You have a relationship with the most high that strengthens your faith. So you're no longer swayed by the worldly desires, by the fleshly desires, right? Let's read 14 again. But strong meat belong it to them that are of full age. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. You're able to have discernment. You're able to look at the scripture and see what it says. And you're able to see evil for what it is and good for what it is. Right. Where the Lord is now showing you visions and dreams where you can see those things. You could even see it. You don't even need the Lord uh, giving you a vision about it because you can see it with your own spiritual eyes, right? That's someone of a full age. You're mature in the word of God, right? So that's what Paul is saying in terms of growth. You must grow. It's very important to grow. Let's go to 1 Peter 2, and we're going to read from 1 to 3. 1 Peter 2, and we're going to read from 1 to 3. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrites and envies and evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. If so, be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. So this is Peter saying, wherefore, laying aside all malice. So you, you're new in the faith. So he's saying, put aside all malice and all guile, all hatred and hypocrisies. Don't be a hypocrite. And envies, don't be envying your brother and your sister. And evil speakings, don't speak evils of your brothers and sisters. Don't be gossiping and spreading evil rumours that are not true about your brothers and sisters. Or don't be saying wicked things to your brothers and sisters just to tempt them so that they can get angry or feel like someone has done them wrong. As newborn babes, you're new in this. You're new, new, you, you've become newly, you've had a new life in Christ, Right? Desire the sincere milk of the word. You must desire the, the, the basic oracles of God, the sincere milk that's going to help you to grow because babies need lots of milk because the milk has the nutrients inside of it to help the baby's bones to build, to, to build a baby so that the baby can grow physically. 
that you may grow thereby. If so, be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Once you once you realize that the Lord is gracious, you will start to grow. Once you once you believe in the Lord, that the Lord will will help you to grow. You know, the milk is what we all need, but we must grow. Right. It's important to grow. Right. So let's now go to First Corinthians three. And we're going to read from 1 to 11. And I, brethren, could could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. Let's read it again. But I, brethren, so this is Paul again. I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto, unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. So carnal is associated with a babes in Christ. Why? Because when you come into faith, you still have the worldliness in you. You you you've just come in. You've just started to accept Christ. You've just believed in Christ, but you still have that worldliness in you. So you're still very much deep into flesh your fleshly desires, but in the growth, but when you start growing, that more and more that starts to be shaken off, right? And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even unto babes in Christ. I have fed you milk and not with milk. Not, let's read it again. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. But herethro, ye were not able to bear it, neither you now or ye able. Right. So he fed you with milk and not with meat. The strong stuff. You can't take the strong stuff. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. You, you say to a, a church going Christian that you are the Israelites of the Bible and they're Israel. They're black. Right. And they still can't get it. It's like, no, I just can't get my head around it. I just I just can't believe it. It's because you're still a babe. Right. In order to not be a babe. You must be studying. You must have to you have to study. You have to be in prayer. You have to fast and you have to be obedient. Right. There must be growth. You can't be comfortable in the Christian church because the Christian church keeps you at a particular level. But you need to grow, grow and grow and grow. Right. I have fed you with milk and not with meat for hair, hair throw. You were not able to bear it. Neither yet now are ye able for ye are, are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are you not carnal and walk, walk as men? So. You know the milk, but that milk ain't really growing in you. You're still carnal, right? So when Paul went to teach to them, they were rejecting him, just like they rejected Christ and all the other prophets, right? Because they were still carnal. For ye are carnal, for whereas there is among you envy and strife and divisions, are you carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom ye believe, even as the Lord gave to every man? So they were both ministers of God. Six, I have planted, Apollos wanted, I have planted, and Apollos watered, but God gave the increase, right? So they were giving you the word of God. Seven, so then neither is he that planted anything neither he that water it, but God that give it the increase. So God gives the increase, right? So you, the water goes into the word because the word is water, right? And the Lord gives you the increase. So they put, so, so they plant the word in you, right? They give you, they give you the word of God, but it's up to you what you do with it, right? You need to go away, study it, meditate on it and do something with it. Now he that plant it and he that water it are one, and every one shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. So you will receive your own reward according to your own labor, according to what you do in Christ, your works. For we are laborers together with God, ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. 10. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid a foundation and another build it thereon. But let every man take heed how he build it thereon. For other foundation can can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So Christ already laid a foundation. You just need to build upon it. Right. Become a master builder and build upon it. Right. You cannot stay stagnant. 
you got to build and build and build and build. You need to grow in Christ. You see, the problem with a lot of you Christians, especially Christians, you know, the church going Christians, the problem with a lot of you guys is that you don't study. You don't study and you don't take it seriously. Right? People in the Western countries, right, you have you have so much at your fingertips that you 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 do you you let life get in the way you let your job get in the way you let your car get in the way you let instagram get in you get in the way you get the things of this world get in the way and christ get shoved to a sunday right and then you go in the church with a crisp new bible or no bible because it's all on the phones these days and that bible you never read Dust is all over it. You've had the Bible for five years and it still looks brand new because it's never been used. And then you go to these churches and you say, oh, well, I don't have to carry a paper Bible anymore. It's all on my phone. But that phone is not helping you, though, because all you're doing is using your phone. But you're not really using it to do proper study. <laughs> right. To do proper study, you need to actually use a book. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So let's read the last verse again. Let's read the last two verses. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me, is a wise master builder. I have laid the foundation, another build it thereon. But let every, every man take heed how he build it thereon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Christ Jesus. So he lays the foundation and you build upon it. Right. So he lays the foundation and you build upon it. Now, let's go to Daniel's 12 and we're going to read from four to 10. Now, this is the reason why it's very important to study, to fast, pray, study and to be obedient. Strengthen your faith, constantly strengthening, strengthening your faith. Right. If you claim that you're Christian, you're God fearing Christian. Right. You should grow when someone comes and tells you something and show you in the Bible where it says it. Right. Your instant reaction should be, oh, because that's what the Holy Spirit does. It tells you that makes sense. Now I get it. You see, you should have a load of holes in your head. And then when someone comes and gives you what you needed, right, that hole should be filled. And then you go, oh, that's a perfect fit. That makes sense. But then you go away and you study it. So that it resonates with your spirit. So you know it's above board. Right. But a lot of Christians are trained to listen to the pastor and to throw away the Bible. Right. You listen to in a, you listening to a pastor that just gives you a pep talk, gives you a encouraging talk. You know, you listen to a message which is high on making you feel good. The Lord is going to give you this. He's going to open the doors to this. He's going to increase you. He's go is, is he really going to increase everybody that's in the congregation? Really? Really? Come on, man. This is the month of your increase. This is the month of your favor. This is the month of your, I don't know, your love month. Is he really going to give you sitting in the congregation all of these things? No, not really. It's just a prosperity pep talk. That's all it is. It's to make you feel good. Right. But real growth and real rewards, rewards comes from your growth. Right. Not staying stagnant, but growing in Christ and not just learning new things, but actually being obedient, staying away from things that are not going to make you grow. Right spiritually i mean spiritually that, that are going to make you stumble in the faith right now we're reading daniel's 12 and we're reading from 4 to 10 but though oh daniel shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased so everything daniel saw a lot of dreams lots of visions lots of dreams a lot of it he couldn't understand he just couldn't understand it but he was speaking to christ and christ said and the lord said shut up the book shut up the words and seal the book so even back then there was things in the bible that couldn't be understood even to the time of the end so it was the, the most high saved an appointed time for it to be revealed 
Many shall run to and fro. Many shall scratch in their heads thinking we need to understand this thing. So they're using every means possible to get to the bottom of it. And knowledge shall be increased and the knowledge shall be increased. In the last days, knowledge has increased. How has it increased? Via libraries. You can go to libraries. You can go on Amazon and order books. You can go in your public libraries and read books. You can go in, you know, lots of different types of libraries, you know, and read books. You can go in your university and look for any book you want, right, <laughs> and find it right? The radio, the internet, television, all these things have been increased. Even the technology in flying from place to place, you can go from one place to the other quite easily. So you can speak to someone face to face and show them it, right? So all these things have increased, right? And it has caused knowledge to be increased. So let's continue. Then I, Daniel, looked and behold, there stood other two, the one on this side of the bank of the river and another on that side of the bank of the river. And one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the, of the river, how long shall it be to the end of these wonders? So that was Christ standing on upon the waters of the river. So that means he had all the understanding there with him. How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? How long shall it be until we get to know what the Bible is saying? what these dreams, what these visions are saying. Seven, and I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven and swore by him that live it forever, that it shall be a time, times and a half. That goes into 350 years, right? But you need to precept that to actually work out when that time, when you precept it with other scriptures, right you get you realize it's from 1619 to to 1969 so it's roughly around that period so it's 350 years for a time times and a half and when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people all these things shall be finished so when israel is scattered to the four corners of the earth as it was prophesied to happen then it means that it's time now, after this has happened, then it's time now for things to be revealed. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these times? So Daniel didn't understand all of that. What's times, times and a half? He didn't get it, <laughs> right? So he's asking the question again. And he said, go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the end, to seal till the time of the end so he's saying don't worry about it daniel just don't worry about it <laughs> really don't worry about it when that time comes i will show you it i will show the whole world it <laughs> that's what christ was saying right let's read again and i heard but i understood not he still didn't understand it and then said i oh lord what shall it be what shall be the end of these things and he said go thy way daniel for the words are closed up and sealed to the end of time so until the end 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 10 many shall be purified and made white and tried but the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand but the wise shall understand let's read let's read a bit again many shall be purified mean many shall be made righteous and made white and tried. Try just means you go through tests, right? You go through the trials of faith, the fire. And wicked shall be, shall do wickedly. So those that are wicked shall keep on being wicked. And none of the wicked shall understand. And none of the wicked shall understand. But the wise shall understand. You see, but the wise shall have their spiritual eyes and spiritual ears open. But are you the wise? Are you the wise? Are you the wise? How would you know if you're the wise, right? You need to be studying. You need to be growing, praying, fasting, studying, doing the things that someone of a full mature age does. Nobody's going to nanny you and say, oh, well, this is this is what this is and this is what A and this is B. So when you're a full grown adult, you know, you're not, you're not going to have your mother coming back nannying you. Or your father nannying you again because you're a full age. You need to take responsibility, right? You're a grown person, right? And that's what you should do. Why? Because 
your salvation lies in your hands, right? Because Paul already said, you work at your own salvation with fear and trembling, right? If you're a woman, you align yourself with a, a man that is wise, has wisdom of the Holy Scriptures, a man that can lead you in the right, in the right way because the Bible says you're joint heirs with your husband, right? He takes you in. You take each other in, but he really takes you in because he's the head, right? <laughs> because he's supposed to be teaching you. So you need to find a man of wisdom. And when you're a man, you need to find a woman that submits, a woman that is submissive, has a submissive, gentle, meek, kind, loving, faithful spirit. That's the woman that you need to be with. A help meet, a help meet, a pillar of rest, a woman that understands her place within that marriage, which is to follow her husband's lead right that's what you need right let's read 10 again many shall be purified made white and tried but the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand but the wise shall understand but the lord gives wisdom to the wise right the lord is not up there giving wisdom to people that ignore his holy scriptures right people that ignore his holy words you see the whole world disintegrating you see marriages be, has become a joke the most high's holy institution of marriage has become a joke <laughs> right but you're still sinning you're still accepting the world you're still accepting the worldliness you're still going to nightclubs you're still dancing to f words profanity to music that calls you a b-i-t-c-h you're a woman and you're still dancing to that in the nightclubs you still got your marriage you married to, to a man, but you're still going to a nightclub for every man to touch you and hold you and push you and poke you in a nightclub. That's not wise. That's not wisdom. That's not growth. That's a babe, right? You're still a babe, you know, and that's sad because you've been in this thing for 15 years and you're still a babe. Some people gladly say, I grew up in the church, but now you're 20, 30, 40, 50 and you don't, you haven't learned a thing in all that time. You haven't really grown from that time. You're still a baby. You still can't articulate the basic oracles of God. You still don't get it. You need someone to come along to teach you. And you still won't get it. Because the Lord deludes you into thinking whatever you want to think. Because you're wicked. At heart, you are a wicked person. Right? You believe in doing wicked things to other people. Right? And wicked, you're a rebellious, wicked soul. Right. Romans 9, reading 27 to 29. Elias also cried concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved for he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. And as Elias, meaning Isaiah, said before, except the Lord of the Sabbath had left us a seed, we had been as Sodom, uh, we had been as Sodom and being made like unto Gomorrah. So the Lord preserves his holy seed, right? When people say things like, oh, well, I'm mixed. Oh, well, Israel no longer exists, right? The Lord preserves his seed. He didn't wipe us out, right? Slavery couldn't wipe us out, right? It could have wiped us out, but it didn't <laughs> because the Lord preserves his people. Right. So we still look like Israelites. Right. <laughs> I mean, some of us look like other nations, but a lot of us, most of us still look like Israel. Right. We still have that somewhat resemblance to Israel, if not physically, but spiritually. We have a connection to Israel. Right. So 27 again, Elias, Isaiah also cried concerning uh, I also cry concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. So only one third of Israel shall be saved. It's not for everybody. It's not for everybody. But however, if you've been in the church and you, you felt the Lord calling you to him in the church, then you should grow. There is growth. You should be you should give yourself time to grow right? Well, there's no time really. You should do it now. You should really, really set aside time so that you can grow. Because this walk is not about, this walk is not about what you, what you want. It's about what God wants. And that's why it's important to maintain that strong bond, that relationship 
and that growth within Christ. Right. So let's now go to Jeremiah 2, 13. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the the fountain of living waters and hewed them out cisterns broken cisterns that cannot hold no water because why we were following the nation's gods the other nation's gods we were not we were forsaking the most high's holy commandments and we were following other gods you see we were following their laws we were following uh, when i say their laws i mean we were following those other the customs of the other nations the other gentile nations so god said for my people have committed two evils they have forsaken me for forsaken the god of abraham isaac and jacob me, the fountain of living waters, God knows everything because he created all things. He's the ancient of days, no beginning and no ending of days. And hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. So broken uh, containers of water or, or pipes or whatever. Broken carriers of water that can't hold no water. Why? Because there's no understanding in that. Right. There's no understanding. Right. If you're seeking anything apart from Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, you won't get the understanding. If you're stuck in a Christian church with a prosperity minister that tells you what you like hearing, you will get no understanding. Right. If you put yourself in a church where the pastor doesn't even take out the Bible and show you this is the precept to go with this precept. And this is how you understand the Bible and go line by line to explain things. Look. If a man stands before you and gives himself a flattering title, some of them call themselves apostles, some call themselves bishops, some call themselves all sorts of ministers and deacons, whatever title they want to give themselves. Right. Some people call themselves a high priest, which is crazy madness. But but that's what people do. They give themselves flattering titles. But when it comes to, to expressing what the word of God is saying so that people can be edified, they don't do it. They give you a false understanding. Even if they bring out the scriptures, they might give you some truth. You know, I'm not saying everything they say is lies, but it all depends on the doctrine the, the church. They might give you 50% truth. They might give you 70% truth, or they might give you 10% truth, right? <laughs> right but this walk is not about a denomination this walk is about truth christ said you will know the truth and it shall set you free let's go there actually let's go there the the bible says you you will know the truth and it shall set you free so we're going to go to that scripture Right. So let's go to John 8 and we're reading from 31 to 32. And this will be the final scripture. Then said Jesus to his Jews, which believed on him. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And he shall know the truth. And ye, meaning you, shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free or make you free. 31 again. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my words, if you continue in the words that I'm saying to you, then ye are disciples indeed. Right. In order to continue in the word, you have to constantly water yourself with the word of God so that you can have growth and ye shall know the truth and and the truth shall set you free. So what sets you free? It's the truth that sets you free, not a denomination not a pastor or a non-denomination, not a televangelist, not a not your uh, your Israelite minister that teaches you Hebrew, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> now, <laughs> it is the truth that sets you free, right? The truth you're able to grow spiritually. Now, the Lord shows people certain things, and other people He doesn't show those things to. But that's all part of the growth. 
We can learn from other people that know more about something than others. Certain people may know about the history of the Pharisees. You know, they may know about the histories of locations. Some people might be experts in archaeology. Some people might be experts in, I don't know, whatever the Bible speaks of, they might be experts in that particular department. Our job is to learn from them. And then we, we study it ourselves to see that everything is above board. The Holy Spirit comes and the Holy Spirit tells us that this is above board. That's how we're supposed to be growing. Now, brothers and sisters, I hope you're edified. Shalom.